Can you time the market? That's one of the age old questions that's been debated for years and years. If you go out and you talk to your financial advisor or you go out and look at what's said in the mass media, you're gonna see this message that, no, you really cannot time the market. And not only will they say you cannot time the market, they'll use an argument similar to this one, where they'll say, if you look at your returns in the stock market from 1928 until now, over the last 96 years, if you had stayed invested the entire time, you would have made 23,987% return over the last 96 years. Now, one thing is I know you're probably not 96 or older. So you probably didn't get that whole return stream. But anyways, they'll point to the fact that if you had been invested that entire time, you would have made 23,987%. But, but, if you had missed just the 10 best days over the last 96 years, your return would be 7,864%. So the argument goes like this. If you just missed the best days, your return is going to go down by two thirds. So you have to be invested at all times. Okay, this makes sense. We do want to think about, though, why, what are the incentives for why people are saying this? There's a whole financial industry that is built on the fact that you will place your money with them and you will not touch it and you will not make decisions. You'll take all that money and hand it over to them and just let them collect fees on it. So if this is true, well, let's look at the other side of the argument. As we go to talk about the other side of the argument, I want to bring in my partner, Mark Boucher. Now, I just want to give you a little backstory on Mark before I bring Mark in. I've actually started being a client of Mark's in 1998. I first heard of Mark in 1995. And I was a client of Mark's from 1998 until 2018 for 20 years before he and I started partnering up and working together. Mark is one of the best market timers and one of the best macro analysts I have ever seen. I've subscribed to some of the most expensive newsletters, some of the most expensive services that you could subscribe to, services like Bank Credit Analyst and Ned Davis Research. And Mark has been better than any of them. I've watched Mark go through the dot-com crash, the dot-com boom and dot-com crash. I watched him go through, I watched him navigate 9-11 the Iraqi war, the great financial crisis. I watched him navigate the Greek default, the bull market from 2011 to 2020, the COVID crash, the backside of the COVID crash, and now this crazy inflationary environment we're in now. So I've seen Mark in the best of bull markets and the worst of bear markets. And I've seen how he thinks about the market and I've seen literally the signals that he has put out to his subscribers, including me. So with that, I'm really excited to bring Mark in today to talk with you about how we can time the market. So Mark, come on in. Well, it's right here. It's been sitting here the whole time. <laughs> I thought I had a secret room back there with him. I forgot. He was just on the camera. All right. So we have this graph that we want to share with you. The flip side of this argument is what actually happens if you're not in the market on the 10 worst days. And it's really fascinating to see because you never see this argument being made. But here in black, we see the S&P return. Oh, this is back to 1998 over the last 22 years, 21 years, from 1998 to 2019. And we see the impact of missing the 10 worst days. Missing the 10 worst days actually has a massive impact on the portfolio. And the reason for this is drawdowns. Now, this is something I first learned about from Mark in his book called The Hedge Fund Edge, where he talked about the damage that was done by deep drawdowns. Do you want to talk about that a little bit here, Mark? Yeah, I think that most people look at total returns, and that's kind of what they're main focuses on and what you really want to be 
looking at is what is your total return or your average annual return compared to how much of a drawdown, how much losses would you have to sustain to get that return? And the, and the thing that people don't realize is actually drawdown is probably much more important than total returns. You want to limit the drawdowns enough so that you don't have to make up such a huge return. If you lose, for example, you know, a, a 25%, you're going to have to make up a much higher amount just to get back to even. And most studies show that investors, long-term investors, when they start losing 25, 30, somewhere in that range, they, they stop having the discipline to follow the strategy. It gets too painful. So that you want to have a strategy that keeps your drawdown at a level that you can handle and still has a good average returns. And when you look at like a hedge fund, for example, what the what the people are looking at that are investing in it is what's your return compared to your drawdown? That number is really what's critical for a good investment. I agree. And if we look at this table that we shared with you, this, this is a, a table that has a 6% return. So basically, if you make 6%, how long does it take to recover from a drawdown? Now, if you go back and you look at the great financial crisis in 2007 to 2009, you can see that the drawdown was nearly 50% in the S&P. And if you just look at a 30% drawdown, it takes six years and a month to get back to even, just to get back to even. At a 40% drawdown, it's eight years, nine months. And at 50% drawdown, it's 11 years, 11 months. So basically in 2008, we had a drawdown basically of 50%. And one of the things I love you just that love that you just said, Mark, is that when people have deep drawdowns, you said they, they stop following the rules of the strategy. A lot of people just stop following the strategy, period, right? They're just said, I'm done. Yeah. So all you do is lock in a loss. So one of the things that we talk all the time about, our rule number one is come back tomorrow. And when you're playing the long game, it's even more important. If you come back tomorrow and you come back the next day and you can be in the game for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, you can make an incredible amount of money but you cannot make the money if you're not in the game. The way you're not in the game is by having deep drawdowns, by quitting. So that's gonna be a big focus on what we talk about today is how we minimize drawdowns and the impact that that has you know, in, in our overall uh, investing. So this is a graph of this year. One of the things that Mark and I started pounding the table on about two years ago, was the fact that modern portfolio theory, which is how every financial advisor and every financial institution invests their client money. This is how your money is invested. We started pounding a table about two years ago that modern portfolio theory was broken, that it would no longer work. And that has really been borne out this year because typically in a down year, what's happened in the past is if stocks go down, bonds go up. And so bonds actually help mitigate the losses of your stock portfolio. But this year, they're both going down. That's what we were concerned about. And so you can see in this chart, the pink is the S&P. The S&P is down 23% year to date. The orange is the NASDAQ. It's down 32% year to date. And then the black is, a, is the modern portfolio theory allocation of 60% equities, 40% bonds, which is supposed to save you and it's down 20% this year. So all of these are damaging drawdowns. These are the kind of things we're trying to avoid, that we will avoid. So Mark has a newsletter called the Reach Trader Daily Commentary. And in the Reach Trader Daily Commentary, Mark publishes his market timing signals. And he has signals across different time frames. He has short-term signals, he has intermediate-term signals. Do you want to just share, with, talk to them a little bit about the signals that you publish? The time. Yeah, I, I mean, so these are the intermediate-term signals, which are kind of you want to be defending against if you're, you don't want to fade those. You want to make sure that those are are wind at your back, not in your face. Uh, we also have short-term timing signals, and we do a lot of work on context. So a lot of our our we we really focus on internals 
and macros and context and kind of putting those things together. Uh, internal, so people don't realize, but when you're looking at all the advances, declines, all the new highs, new lows, all the up volume, all the down volume totaled for the entire market, it gives you a much better picture of what's actually happening in the full market that most people are focused on the S&P or they're focused on the Dow or something like that. Those, those indexes are capitalization weighted. What that means is really half the index is just 10 big cap stocks. So it's not a very good picture of what's happening in the entire market. And the other thing that you find is when, when you look at differences between what the, what the real full market is doing versus those big cap indexes, if they're, the longer the divergences go, for example, if the s and is making new highs, but the broad market is actually trending lower, the longer that goes, the more substantial the decline is going to be, the big, bigger the bear market that you're building for. And same thing at the lows, except that you're looking at number of thrusts and, and pictures of demand. So we're trying to look at internals, get a picture of the whole market, and do a supply and demand analysis where you're looking at down volume and you're looking at number of declines and you're looking at new lows and you're combining a lot of those things to say, how strong is supply? And then you look, do the same thing for demand. You look at up volume, you look at new highs, you look at advances and you, and you determine what is the relationship between the power of demand and the power of supply? What is the context? And what's the macro backdrop and the interest rate backdrop and the uh, policy backdrop and putting those things together is really how we get those signals. And if you actually take our courses, we teach you so that you can find those exact same signals and do it yourself. Yeah, that's excellent, Mark. I think the big thing that you're really highlighting that most people don't think about or don't even know is as you said, they look at an index, but we wanna remember that an index is composed up of individual names and the market is made up of all all these stocks that are not even in the index and so a lot of this a lot of this analysis you do of what is going on across the entire market gives a, a, a different picture as you said than what the indexes do uh, so i think that's a one aspect of your approach that's so powerful that most people are really unaware of um, okay great so what I wanted to share with you, I had this chart up here, is right here. These are actual signals out of Mark's newsletter. You can see the dates. These are intermediate term buys and sells. What's the difference, Mark, between a short term signal and an intermediate term signal? Just so people kind of get the idea. You know, short term signals can kind of let's say that you're you're you know negative on an intermediate term time frame. You're still going to get multi-week rallies or something within that uh, thing and within that intermediate term move and the short-term signals can kind of help you align with that larger time frame trend repeatedly so that you get multiple uh, multiple opportunities to take advantage of it for example cool and so mark published these these signal published these sig these signals in the newsletter and basically you can see a couple different ways to use the signals. This is basically taking a 2% risk because Mark publishes not only an entry price, but actually a stop price, correct, Mark? Yeah, you're just taking the relevant high or the low of the S&P, adding 0.1 to it and using that as your stop. Yep, so you can see the entry and the stop in this table and then the exit. And this is basically having a $250,000 account and risking 2% of your capital or $5,000 per trade. And you can see risking $5,000 basically kicked out a profit of $197,540 just over the last four years. This is an annual return of just under 20% a year, but with very little drawdown. That's one of the important aspects of this. Another way to view this is you could go fully long or fully short. So instead of a percent risk, this is actually with a $250,000 account, we buy $250,000 of the SPY index, or we sell $250,000 of the SPY index. So we're taking on the risk of the SPY index. In this case, you can see that this actually turns $250,000 into 
over a million dollars in four years with an average annual return of over 82%. And uh, so Mark actually publishes these in the letter so you can see this. Now, you could, you could certainly do this and this is amazing, but there's other uses for these signals. One, you could use these signals to manage your allocations in your retirement accounts, your 401ks, in your insurance accounts, where you could be, when you're in an intermediate long-term signal, you could be 75 or 80%, you know, 100% long equities. And when you're in a short segment, you could back that allocation way off down to long 40%, long 20%, something like that, instead of just being long a bunch more. Now you can't typically go short in these accounts and some, some structures you can, but you could use this to manage your retirement money. You could also use this, talk about Mark, how you teach students to use these signals to do even better in individual names. Yeah. So, I mean, we also have lists each month of the top stocks to buy that are, have really strong earnings growth, really strong relative strength good uh, accumulation, et cetera. And the same thing for shorts. We have a short list that are the weakest stocks uh, having you know, really poor relative strength, really bad earnings situation that's there, that they're falling apart, major topping formation, all those things. So you can, now when you get a buy signal, instead of looking just at the SPY, you can figure out the stocks that are breaking out with the right pattern that are the top relative strength stocks that are likely to really outperform. And the same thing for selling short. And even if you have a retirement account, there are always inverse ETFs like SH you can use that'll allow you to go short the market um, that's still within the parameters of, of those vehicles. This is an example of another strategy that Mark teaches that has a similar context. Do you want to talk about the ETF? Yeah, so so this so Chuck was talking about how you could use the signals to kind of weight, you know, how much you're long, how much you're short. And what this is really doing is it's looking at the long term and the intermediate term and some of the short term signals that are of a particular type. And it's Sometimes it's 25% long, sometimes it's 0% long, sometimes it's 100% long, but within that you're looking for alignment of the multiple time frames to be more aggressive. And so it's a really low risk way of trading the S&P. So for example, since 2007, 2009 year, it's had a 9.8% maximum drawdown. That was the worst hit you could possibly take if you invested at the exact worst time, that's uh, way lower than the S&P, which is down over 50% during this period. And yet this has four times the return of the S&P. So we're talking about 4.5 times the profit on a drawdown that's about a fifth the risk. And that's how you can cut your risk, make it manageable, and yet participate and have a conservative way of doing it that's, and this is outlined. We basically all you have to do is look at one line on Reeds Trader. And you know how to do this it, it, very quickly each day. Yeah, that's amazing. It really is. Talk to him about the short term signals that are in the in the commentary. Right. So, for example, what you're really sometimes you uh, you want to know the short term what's happening. You again, we talk. So here you have, for example, an intermediate term cell that came just after this short term cell in the vertical line, and so now you can see we have alignment of our trends. And so you want to be careful about selling short when you get a buy signal and you want to wait till you get another sell signal. And this gives you another opportunity to go with that main trend. And you can see how you get better opportunities when the trend changes. And so really we've been in an intermediate terms or long-term sell signal the entire year it, it coming right after January 20th. And so any of these uh, you know, sell signals say, are saying, okay, if you want to be looking for shorts now, is a good time to do it. So having a mix of those, and as you can see, the alignment of the time frames is where you get your really good points. Yeah, that's amazing. So one of the great things about Mark is Mark is really there to help you where you can learn the very techniques that Mark talked about today, where he teaches them to you. So we have, we have a couple different workshops. We have a market timing workshop specifically that teaches you these techniques on how to time the market. 
And then Mark also has the Reeves Trader Daily Commentary where that we've discussed today, where the signals that you've seen today come out in a newsletter comes out every single day. And a number of our students have not only commented how valuable the service was in terms of the signals, but they felt like it was actually taking a class every day. Like they learned a tremendous amount about the market, about society, frankly, because Mark talks about some of these things uh, that has made them a much better investor and a much better trader. So if you find this really interesting, you want to learn more about it, you can click on this link for readstrader.com daily slash commentary. And there's a, information on the, on the Reach Trader daily commentary where you can see if this is something that fits you. So Mark, I want to thank you for joining us today. And coming in and talking me. about this. Yeah, this is awesome. And it, it, you certainly disprove the theory that you cannot time the market. And as I said, this is not something, Mark has been doing this for over 30 years. So this isn't a short-term blip. Uh, and, and I've seen him, as I've said, in bull markets and bear markets be able to navigate this. So check this out. And remember, come back next Tuesday where we continue to share ideas and techniques and guests like today that help you take your trading to an elite level. Have an awesome week. We'll see you next week.